I mean, he should uh, try it so so have a headset on your table for him. For moving, for moving. Remain standing for the national anthem. as they enter stadium ground. The academic procession comprises academic staff and the guests of honor, our graduating students. You can have your seats. Yeah, what you want? I don't see it much, and I just threw that little gap there. You want me to catch those that come in on the other side? I waiting for the other side. If they don't come in on the other side? Okay. No, that's the most I get it. Through that, through that little gap. I don't have much uh, with the cable. Yes, it does. 
yeah, I have a little, a little something. I don't know if you want me to catch in the center while children catch in those there. Yeah, I can go.
not one tenth of the world.
Burton, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica and Mr. Burton, Representative of the Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister of Tourism, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Cabinet Secretary, the Honorable Leader of Opposition, Jesma Paul Victor, our Ambassadors, Members of the Board of Governance of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, President of the Dominica State College, Mr. Anthony Edwards, our featured speaker, Senior Government Officials, Members of the Diplomatic Corps, Management and Staff of the Dominica State College, Benefactors of the Dominica State College, Family Members and Well-Wishers of the Graduating Class, Members of the Media, Ladies and Gentlemen, and most especially the Graduating Class of 2023. Now that I have established protocol, I'm your host, Dean Vidal, and um, I'm a lecturer at the Dominica State College. And I have with me my co-host, Ms. Makiba Brizzi, the head of the department in English at the Dominica State College. My brother, I don't say nothing now. <laughs> and now we will call on Mr. Husson Antoine, the president of the Christian Fellowship Club at DSC, to lead us with an invocation. Okay, uh, please stand everybody for reverence for God. Father God, we thank you for today. We are elated for this grand ceremony. We thank you for the weather that you have given us. And we ask graciously that it would remain so. Today, we recognize this graduating class for their achievements and we commend them for their hard work and efforts. May this day be a day of happiness, celebration, and sweet memories. As they have reached this milestone, we humbly ask that those who are moving on to the work world that they are graced to be excellent and diligent employees, setting records and top standards at any work, place of work, and provide a good reputation for DSC. For those heading on to further studies, we ask that you guide them and give them wisdom. May they have strength to overcome unforeseen circumstances and wisdom to solve those issues when they arise. I ask that those who have not accepted Christ as the Lord and Savior, may they do so if I will not. And we ask all this in Jesus' name. Thank you, Mr. Antoine. I now invite my co MC, Ms. Makiba Brizzi, to officially welcome us all. Her Excellency Silvani Burton, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mr. Burton, Representative of the Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Denise Charles, Minister of Tourism, Honorable Octavia Alfred. Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training and National Excellence, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Jesma Paul Victor, Members of the Board of Governors of Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, President of the Dominica State College, Mr. Anthony Edwards, Featured Speaker, Senior Government Officials, That's Members of the Diplomatic Corps, management and staff of the Dominica State College, benefactors of the Dominica State College, family members, well-wishers of the graduating class, members of the media, yes. ladies and gentlemen, and our most honored guests, the graduating class of 2023. Good afternoon. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under heaven, Ecclesiastes 3.1. At this moment, we are in a season of celebration, switch, achievement, yeah, and hope. The next Today, we gather to honor the students who have dedicated years of hard work, passion, and determination to arrive at this pivotal moment in their lives. As such, 
it is my distinct privilege to welcome you to this memorable occasion. Graduates, you have navigated the tumultuous waters of the 21st century tertiary education. Each of you persisted through long days and long nights of pushing boundaries to attain new heights of knowledge. Now here you stand before the next phase, the next season of your life, armed with the tools and the skills that DSC has provided. As we proceed, let's take a moment to applaud the faculty and staff who have shown unwavering support and commitment to the graduates along this journey. Yeah. Your Your tutelage deserves the highest commendation. Similar to a captain of a ship, you have steered your students through college waters. Boy, Similar to I the lighthouse, you have guided their success. To the parents, family members, friends, and colleagues present here today, your contribution to the success of these graduates is immeasurable. You provided the safe havens to vent frustrations. The love that knows no bounds, the encouragement that fuel their determination, and the indelible belief in their abilities. Today's achievements are in no small part a re reflection of your sustained support. Thank you. Once again, I extend my warmest welcome to each of you, and I invite you to revel in this extraordinary moment. Graduates, the next season requires you to stand out stand tall, stand to impact the lives of all. In the words of counseling psychologist, Anna Marie Mora, there are no worlds to conquer, but worlds to create. As you proceed, and as we proceed this afternoon, embrace this season with courage. Let the celebrations commence. Welcome. <laughs> And now, I call forward the president of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, to deliver the charge to the students. Good afternoon, everyone. Her Excellency, Silvani Burton, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mr. Burton, Representative of the Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister of Tourism, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Honorable Leader of the Board Opposition, Jesmo Paul Victor, Members of the Board of Governors of the Dominica State yeah, College, Mr. Anthony Edwards, featured speaker, yeah, so senior government officials, members of the Diplomatic Corps, management and staff of the Dominica State College. I also want to take to time to recognize yeah. the Cabinet Secretary, Carl okay, for her work with the, with the college as we prepared for this yeah. event. Thank you. Family members and well-wishers of the graduating class, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, and of course, most importantly, graduating class of 2023. It is perhaps a monumental event for you, but it is also for every one of us, because every time we graduate a class from the Dominica State College, we graduate another graduate person in our community. Um, Her Excellency, Ms. Silvana Burton, Mr. President Mr. of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mr. Burton, Honorable Minister of Education, Octavia Alfred, members of the Board of Governors. Unfortunately, our chair cannot be here. She was um, traveling and could not make it back on time. So she sent her regrets, and um, hopefully we'll see her next year. Mr. Davidson, Tony Edwards, keynote speaker, members of the Diplomatic Corps, government ministers, other government representatives, especially invited guests, faculty, staff, students, media, parents, and relatives of graduates. 
graduates, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, yes. It's so great to be here once again to see another amazing graduating class of the Dominican State College. Of course, Dominican State College, a lot of us do not recognize how important they are to the fabric of our society and the amount of graduates we produce who are now all over the world. Just a, a moment ago, you noticed one of our students planning to become a pastor in read the prayers. So we are important in the fabric of our nation, and therefore every time we meet here, it is important for us and of course for our country. You are amazing class. I say you're amazing because you are resilient and focused class. The recent graduates before you had to go through COVID and Maria, and I know some of you um, went to were at college when there was COVID, but you survived. You were class who came when our buildings were still being unrepaired, but now they are being repaired, but you were focused and you developed strategies that allowed you to cope with the challenges to study and to pass all your exams. And are now graduating. Congratulations, you are now a graduate. Well, I too graduated last year as president of this wonderful enduring college, but I had to return one more time while we search for a new president. However, it is still exciting for me to be here with you one more time. I promised the director of student activities last year, 2022, that was my last commitment exercise. She said, and I quote, we will see. I guess she knew something that I didn't. So I'm here. But enough about me. I'm here to deliver to you, wonderful graduates, your presidential charge before you move forward into this dynamic world. So let me make it short and sweet. I know you don't like long speeches, neither do I. So let's go. Today should be an exciting and very special day for you. It is in fact the beginning of the rest of your life. You have completed all assignments, stayed up late at night, preparing for exams, passed all those exams, and today you stand here at this commencement exercise, a testament to your perseverance, commitment to work, and you are now a college graduate. Congratulations. Let's pick up the graduates. Let's give them a hand of applause. They have done well. But you would not have done this without the help of support of your parents, your family and friends. So I think that while you celebrate this milestone in your life, we should take this opportunity to recognize all of the people who contributed towards the success and contributed towards this day. Will all the parents of graduating students please stand? Please stand and be recognized parents, grandparents, aunts, uncles, sisters, Brothers, cousins, how about husbands, wives, boyfriends, and besties? Please stand. Thank you. I could not go on, however, without also recognizing I, I the ones plan, who taught you and contributed to your learning. The illustrious faculty of the Dominica State College. Will all members of the faculty please stand to be recognized? Thank you. As we gather here to celebrate and applaud your success as a college graduate, you should take a moment to reflect on your own achievement. In today's digital economy, a college education is absolutely essential if one is to enjoy a high quality of life. And in the Caribbean in particular, a college education has never been easy. In Dominica, like Latin America, only 21% of our eligible population have college degrees. But that is good because the average is 26 globally. So you are therefore indeed a member of a very small fraternity. But as you reflect on your new status as a college graduate, I want you to think of yourself as an agent of change. A graduate who is going to make take down the girl to develop status. And that, my friend, is a first charge. It's going to be hard. Dominica has been a developing country for 40 years, and we need to do everything we can to get it to the next stage, which is a developed country. You are graduating in a time when it's very difficult in the globe. It's always, ah, currently, 
This world is not doing so well. There's a war going on in Eastern Europe, which was in, has impacted the world's economy, including the price of gas in Little Dominica. In a world where the strong nations continue to dominate small countries like ours, you will recognize that recently both Canada and the UK has made it a requirement that to enter the country, we must apply for a visa. And there's nothing wrong with that. Every country must determine its own policies. What I want to point out is that there's no sympathy in the world. There's no alas. This is part of life. And we have to understand that as a small country, we must do everything to develop our nation so one day we can be a fully developed country and can call the shots also. And I'm charging you, new graduates, with the responsibility to be our future. For instance, we, Dominica, do not pollute. We do not affect the carbon emissions in the world. We do not. We have about 3,000, 10,000 cars. But then when climate change impact hits us, we feel the pain. We had to move your graduation from Wednesday to Friday for because of climate change, Philippi. And um, of course, it worked out. Everybody prayed for us. I asked it. Her Excellency, if she prayed, she said yes. The minister prayed. Thank you. Because it worked. We are here today. However, I'm confident, graduates, that in your future, you will make our country and indeed the world a better place. In the future, you will be the ones with the capacity, the intelligence, and the caring, the courage, and the will to fix this imperfect world. In our small Dominica, we are doing better than most of our sister countries, particularly in Africa. We have no wars. Education is still free. Health is still free. We have a strong democracy with the same freedoms guaranteed in all democracies across the globe. We have no discrimination, no segregation. And yes, we have more CO than any country on earth, except perhaps Trinidad. So we're doing okay. But okay is not good enough. We need to do better than okay. We need to unite as a people, put away our differences, and put all our energy and skills into nation building. And I charge you with that responsibility, my new graduates. You are graduating also when there are tremendous opportunities for planners, builders, contractors, supply chain managers, plumbers, and farmers to supply the many new hotels with their products. The opportunities are endless and require you who just graduated from college to be creative and innovative in finding and maintaining jobs. My message therefore on this occasion is about working. Trust me, there is no example in history that success, success cannot be, can be achieved without working. No family, no country, no individual can prosper and develop without working. Our nation is only 44 years old, and while the older citizens like me, like myself, was born under colonialism and governed by the UK, you, my dear graduates, was born and has been grown up in an independent country governed by Dominican, for Dominica. But I recognize that during your 21 or 22 years in this nation, no one has taught you anything about how to build a nation, and we take responsibility for that. We have been giving you a lot of tests and exams from kindergarten to high school. And we take so much pride in CXC results, which is all well and good. We really do good at CXC. But the most critical value of an independent country in terms of its development is its work ethics. Work is a key variable in building a nation. Work is a key variable. And I must point out that there are over, over the years, a lot of our good people has worked tirelessly to help build our nation, and I salute them. But it appears that an equal amount of our people seems to consistently <laughs> avoid work and spend time complaining instead. My advice to you is don't join that second group of complainers, my dear graduates. Emulate the work of ethics of developing countries. Look at the Chinese working in Dominica. They come to work at 5 a.m. in the morning and take a break, then come back to work and they build huge buildings. We must emulate countries like those and ethics like those. At DSC, you learn analytical skills, entrepreneurial skills, you learn about how to succeed, and most importantly, you learn the value of work. And hopefully, we'll, you will use that knowledge to seek work, create work, 
and make your goal the creation of wealth for you and your family. <laughs> to build our young nation graduates, we cannot and should not depend on one person, no worry, the leader of the country, to be responsible for the development of our nation and our personal lives. It takes the cumulative effort and work of every citizen to find work and contribute to the, to the success of our nation and our lives. My second stance to you, therefore, is to find a job. If you can't find one, create your own job. Five of you graduates can get together and form a building renovation company, a house painting company, a building cleaning company, a soft drink company, a water company. There are endless opportunities, and you are graduates of college. You need to seize those opportunities. Our country has amazingly recorded from Maria with help from other nations. So now is our turn to stand up, look at our environment, and go to work to fix our country. And I'm going to depend on you to lead our country's nation-building project. I know you can do it. The government has designated Dominica to be the first climate-resilient country in the world, and I believe we can achieve that goal. But the key variable in this objective, my dear graduates, is also W-O-R-K. Most of us believe that to become a resilient country, we need to build stronger bridges, safer roads, stronger roofs, safer and stronger buildings, and dredge our rivers. Those are all necessary components of building a climate resilient country, and we're well on our way. But building stronger and better buildings alone will not make us resilient. Dominica cannot be resilient if we sit by the corners of, of the street refuse job and claim there is no work. Dominica cannot be resilient if we believe that we should be paid big bucks to learn the jobs for which we have no skills. Dominica can be resilient if we believe it's okay to may have kids and have no deadbeat fathers supporting them. Dominica can be resilient if the majority of its citizens believe that government must take care of all aspects of their lives. It can be resilient if everything is street. This dependency syndrome is contrary to the developing criteria of nations. So my third chance to you, my students, is simple. We have given you use of higher education. Use that education to work and create a future for you and your family. Or if you wish, go on to get added skills, create a future for you. If you wish, get added skills that will help you get jobs to become economically independent. As a college graduate, you should not be dependent on anyone for building your wealth. Only you can do that. It was, it was John Locke, the famous philosopher of the 16th century, who said, and I quote, all wealth is the product of labor. So in order to become successful, my dear, you must be prepared to work conscientiously, successfully. Successful people don't only work from 8 to 9 p.m., 4 p.m. They work mentally and physically as long as there is work and their speed. Ann Landers, a U.S. columnist, and a memorable, had a memorable quote which I think you should remember. When you're falling in sick and you're not sick, she said, nobody ever drowned in their own sweat. And think about that. Have you ever heard of anyone drowning in their own sweat? Of course not. So it is very safe to work and work conscientiously. So what do I mean by work conscientiously? If you get a job, you go to work, that's enough. No, it's not. When you get a job, treat the comp well, first, it means that when you get a job, you should not call in sick on Monday mornings when you are covering, recovering from CO. Two, when you get a job, treat the company's customer with respect and good service, bearing in mind that the customers are the ones who bring the revenue to the company that help pay your salary. Think about that. Have any of you ever gone to a store and can't look at any item you purchase, and then you ask the clerk, um, do you have this item? And he will answer, I don't know if they have it now. What happened to we? She, it's our company. She works there, but she says they. We need to change the vernacular. We need to change our means of communication. I'm not sure. Um, it is necessary, my dear graduates, that after 44 years of independence, we need to communicate in areas that make us look positive at all times. And we cannot bring our, our vernacular to the workforce. For instance, what do we mean when we say my sister or brother send me a little money? Is the money small in size 
or did it shrink or small in amount? Why can't we be positive and say my sister sent me some funds yesterday and I'm very grateful? What do we mean when we say I went by my partner and the man gave me a piece of dry bread for breakfast? Was the bread supposed to be wet? Why can't we just say I visited my partner and all we had for breakfast was bread? Doesn't that sound better? We need to help improve our communication skills, my graduates. These are just small areas of college graduates in which you can help to make a difference in our country. So teach your people and your friends in your neighborhood, in your family, at work, to embrace a culture of speaking positively. This is another charge to you. You are entering a Dominica workforce that is in dire need of your young mind and energy. A Dominica looking for new solutions to old problems. A Dominica still mired in the old ways of working as little as we can and getting paid as much as we can. So what will you have to do to move Dominica forward? You have to shift the work paradigm from one of complaining to one of doing. As a college graduate, you have a responsibility to, to help learn about embracing facts in, their dis in your discussions. We in our society are full of opinions. Everybody has one. I could not have made this point any more effective other than quoting the philosopher and Roman emperor Mar Marcus Aurelius, who said, and I quote, opinion of 10,000 men is of no value if none of them knows anything about the subject. You, my friends, need to guide our people to stop talking about subjects with no facts. I don't know if you can do that, but you can try. Don't, we should not waste time complaining or arguing about Creole Festival lineup. Instead, let's spend time discussing how we can clean our environment and keep it clean. How can we invest in our country by buying local? This is how we build a nation. Finally, my dear graduates, I said I was going to be short. You can make a difference by using the scientific and analytical skills that we taught you at Dominica State College to help people understand the issues and find meaningful, objective solutions to those national, national challenges. I know you can do that. You, my friends, are the most educated generation in the history of this young country, and your work is cut out for you. So go out there and help our people understand that the key to economic prosperity is through work, not dependency. Begin to fight to end poverty and inequity in our society. Help stamp, stamp out ignorance in our society. Help our country deal with global climate change. Our country as a whole is doing pretty good for its size and economy, so be optimistic. Take on the challenges in your workplace, in your villages and towns. Don't listen to cynics who never set foot in a college, but are experts on everything, and think that only government must be the ones to develop Dominica. My dear graduates, I want you to choose hope and perseverance over cynicism and empty talk. When you step out of here today, I want you to embrace hope, optimism, and start working more on talking less. Those simple tasks represent my charge to you. Finally, I want to extend thanks to our entire staff, faculty and administration of the college, for your effort, commitment, support, and hard work in helping our students succeed. And to the parents, family, and partners of all our graduates, you have every right to be proud and very happy for them. You have done well. I'd also like to take the opportunity to thank the government of Dominica for the continued funding of the State College and look forward for their continued support in 2023. The government has made DSC a tuition-free college. This is a policy aimed at getting all our population access to higher education, and we embrace that concept. But we now hope that since Dominica citizens can come to college without paying tuition, they will have no problems in understanding that in the future, it will be necessary to start paying a little bit of fees that are necessary to enhance their education. We as a country, ladies and gentlemen, graduates, need to help our government undertake some of those expensive policies by making small contributions to keep this great college working. In the case of Dominica State College, for instance, small lab fees, student activity fee, a library fee, and IT fee will go a long way in making our college economically viable with new equipment and supplies while government continue to pay your tuition. The college will remain tuition-free with students paying small fees to help. This, my people, is a cornerstone value and principle 
of nation building. There is no major challenge. I know you are graduating, but I want you to encourage people in your neighborhood, the parents who are beginning to consider sending their kids to college, to think about offering, volunteering to pay a small fee. If you do that, I thank you, and that will be a step in helping build our nation. And as for graduates, before I close, I always give five short tidbits to my graduates. One, be careful what you put about yourself on social media, because when you apply for a job, employers check social media. Never forget your bag or your cell phone on a bus. Trust me, you ain't getting back. Always check the phone number or address you wish to send the message to before hitting the send button. And I'll tell you what my mother told me. Stop following ban. Follow your own path to success. It's good to have friends, but following ban, try each of you to become a leader in your own field. And finally, do not tattoo any part of your body you cannot, you cannot hide in a job interview. The future is yours, my graduates. Take hold of it. Set your goals on working. And con once again, congratulations. I wish you all the best for your very bright futures for which the Dominica State College has prepared you well. Have a good celebration with your friends and family. And when you get very, very rich, don't forget to make donations to your college. God bless you all, and God bless Dominica. Thank you so much, Dr. Peters, for your words of wisdom and practical advice. What is a graduation without a featured speaker? And today, I introduce to you our featured speaker, Mr. Anthony Edwards, Davidson Edwards. Davidson Edwards is a 31-year-old Dominican-born technology entrepreneur, entrepreneur and alumnus of the Dominica State College. Davidson has built technology solutions for different companies in London, Uganda, India, and Dominica. Before returning home, Davidson was Chief Technology Officer at Borisha Technologies, a Finnish startup working, start working between London and Uganda. He also worked as, so, as lead software engineer at Skip Technologies before it was acquired by Facebook. In 2020, Davidson returned to Dominica and teamed up with a schoolmate to found an e-commerce company called ShopDM. Shop DM. The goal of ShopDM is to create economic opportunities for businesses and individuals in Dominica. To date, ShopDM has partnered with over 200 Dominican stores and has enabled them to make more than half a million dollars selling online. Shop DM will op soon open up its delivery network to allow individuals to make additional income by doing deliveries to fulfill others, Uber style. Davidson holds both a master's in business administration and a master's in computer science from the University of Oxford. He believes that the Caribbean's development will be driven by homegrown entrepreneurship and he has returned home to contribute to that. Let us welcome Mr. Edwards. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'll go ahead with the protocol. Her Excellency Sylvanie Burton, uh, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mr. Burton, uh, Representative of the Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Denise Charles, Minister of Tourism, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister of Education, Human Resource Planning, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Jesma Paul Victor, Members of the Board of Governors of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, President of the, Dom the Dominica State College, senior government officials, members of the Diplomatic Corps, members, management and staff of, staff of the Dominica State College, benefactors of the Dominica State College, family members and well-wishers of the graduating class, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon and most importantly, uh, good afternoon to you, the 350 new graduates of the DSC. 
I'm immensely honored to have the opportunity to address you today as your commencement speaker. I will do my best to keep it short, sweet, and impactful. For many of you, this day is the culmination of 13, 14, or even 16 years of schooling. You've been working towards this your entire life. And it hasn't just been you. Your parents, your teachers, your support network, and through subsidies and scholarships, the general society and government have been investing in you to make you what you are right now. Dominica's best hope. Dominica's future change makers. Dominica's future business leaders, technology innovators, civic organizers, presidents, and prime ministers. And that is exactly what I've come here to challenge you to become today. Raise your heads and realize that our intention has always been for you to build and pull our society forward. Pick up the mantle and get to work. Because Dominica needs you. Dominica needs your efforts. Your journey to this graduation has not been easy. You've, been, you've gotten to this point because you have the grit intelligence and determination to achieve goals that are set out before you, to complete challenges, to exceed expectations. So allow me to challenge you today, all of you. Don't tell me where you will be in 10 years. Tell me where Dominica will be in 10 years because of you. That's not how we usually define success. The word of the day is leave physically or mentally, get out, migrate, go to the US, go somewhere else where you can get opportunities, or stay here, but focus only on being successful. Focus on buying a big car or building a big house. You see, you can leave physically, but you can never truly leave. You will always be on DNO looking at the challenges affecting Dominica, where your mother lives, where your father lives, where your cousin or your auntie lives. And you will never truly be a first-class citizen anywhere else. You'll only be the immigrant coming to take the jobs. Or you can stay here, but leave mentally and focus only on getting rich or being successful. But you are still going to be affected by the state of Dominica. You might have a big house, but no electricity. You might have a big car, but no gas. Instead, I challenge you to walk out of here today asking yourselves, what do you want to improve about Dominica, and how will you be successful while doing that? In my own journey, I've walked a very similar path to you. My parents set the goal for me to excel at common entrance, so I excel at common entrance. They told me then to excel at CXC, so I excel at CXC. Then they told me to excel at A-levels, so I excelled at A-levels. And then I left DSC, and I felt a little lost, probably like you do right now. I found myself asking, what next? As you can tell, I've had great parental guidance. Um, but you can probably also tell that I wasn't exactly setting goals for myself. It was only while working in Dominica and studying for my bachelor's degree that I started to do that. My bachelor's degree exposed me to all of these new technical and management concepts, and I started to pay attention to the world around me, to Dominica around me. I started to ask myself why things were the way they are. And I also started to ask myself how they could be changed. At first it was small. Why was there nothing to do at night? But it grew into larger things. Why was everyone trying to leave the country? Why aren't there more jobs, and where do those come from? Why is our economy bad, and how can we improve it? I didn't know it back then, but it was the seed of critical thinking which had been implanted in my mind. It's a seed that once sown cannot be unsown. It only grows. This seed 
drove me to start my first business to try to improve the economy. But I quickly realized I couldn't do what I needed to do. So I, so I set a goal to get trained at master's level so I'd be better equipped to improve Dominica's economy. At Oxford, all I got was fertilizer for this critical thinking seed. Everything was up for, for rethinking. I no longer asked, how could we improve Dominica's economy? I asked, what even was improvement? I asked, should we really develop in the way the US has, an approach based on exploitation of nature and people, or should we forge our own path? That's why after a few years working in London, I had to ask myself, what am I doing? I wake up, I eat, I go to work from 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. sometimes, and what am I doing? I'm building up London, I'm building up the UK, I'm working in a company that is building up London, but I'm only in London because it's already built up. What about Dominica? What about the country where my mother lives, where my father lives? What would we have to do in Dominica to make Londoners want to come to us? Those thoughts brought me home. I teamed up with Gandhi Robin, uh, my business partner, and his brother, Alan Robin, who's with you all right now. <laughs> and the company we've built has already helped 200 other companies generate half a million dollars. That Thank you. That is where the jobs come from. And we're just getting started. We, we'd like to do a thousand times that. So I bring it back to you. You've been born into an amazing country. We have water in abundance. Barbados has no rivers. We have lush forests and beautiful beaches we can freely access. St. Martin has no forests. In parts of Jamaica, hoteliers have annexed the beaches. We have soil fertile enough to feed the whole Caribbean. The sun keeps us warm, while Europeans shiver and pay to heat their homes during winter. We have a strong social fabric that keeps crime low and connection and community high. Almost none of us have seen true poverty as exists in parts of Africa and Asia where a whole family might share a toothbrush or a child might die from something that we're all vaccinated against. We have internet coverage better than parts of the US and roads spanning every part of the country. Don't take any of these things for granted because none of them are. All of these blessings were either built by Dominicans or preserved by them, your parents and their parents. My father, was born into a British colony, but I was born into an independent nation that is the only republic in the OECS. That did not happen by chance. You are standing on the shoulders of giants, and the country you were born into is not poor. It is very much middle income. But the question is, how will you improve Dominica? We have a weak economy with high unemployment. So tell me how you're going to start a business that creates a thousand high paying jobs. We have a culture where we do not trust each other enough to work together. So tell me how you'll start a new union in the company you join or organize a movement across the whole island. We've stopped believing we can be successful while operating honestly with high morals. Now we see that's how the country set up, or I would do it too. Tell me how you'll raise a household that will set a higher standard for the tone of the country. Those incredible lush forests, those black sand beaches, the 365 rivers and blue seas, we cover them with litter. We sell them to the highest bidder because we believe those outside can do better. Tell me how you'll start a community organization to keep your beaches clean or an NGO that lobbies so hard, the next generation meets 50% more forest, not 50% less. We import almost all of our food. Tell me how you're gonna fill my fridge 
with food made by your company, not made in the USA, not made in China, made in Dominica. Don't just become a lawyer. Introduce new laws to better protect abused women and children. Don't just become a doctor. Start a health clinic so world class, people in Guadeloupe take the ferry to come here for healthcare. I'll stop here because you get the point. I'm hopeful about 350 new, intelligent, optimistic change makers entering our society, both empowered and humble. So get educated, get innovative, get strategic, get organized, and get to work. Don't tell me where you will be in 10 years. Tell me where Dominica will be in 10 years because of you. Thank you. Mr. Edwards, very few words could adequately capture how thought-provoking and moving and inspiring this presentation was indeed. I was blessed by it. I'm sure everyone here joins me in thanking you profoundly for what you've just said. So let's give him a hand of applause, everyone. Okay. So I am insincere in saying that we, as lecturers, support all our students and cheer on their success. As such, it is always difficult to single out any one student, you know, anyone that works so hard. Still, it has to be done. And further still, there is always that student who stands out among his or her peers for academic distinction. This year, this honor goes to a young man by the name of Mr. Yes, a young man, Mr. Malik Fitzroy Anthony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the DSC 2023 valedictorian, Malik Anthony, as he gives this valedictory address. A pleasant good afternoon to Her Excellency Silvani Burton, President of the Commonwealth of Dominica, and Mr. Burton, Representative of the Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Dennis Charles, Minister of Tourism, Honorable Octavia Alfred, Minister for Education, Human Resource Training, Vocational Training, and National Excellence, Honorable Members of Cabinet, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, Jesma Paul Victor, members of the Board of Governors of the Dominica State College, Dr. Donald Peters, President of the Dominica State College, Mr. Anthony Edwards, featured speaker, senior government officials, members of the Diplomatic Corp, management and staff of the Dominica State College, benefactors of the Dominica State College, family members and well-wishers of the graduating class, members of media, ladies and gentlemen, and most especially, the industrious graduating class of 2023. Today, I stand before you with pride as the 2023 valedictorian, a graduate from the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology. It is not quite typical to have one of us deliver the valedictorian speech. In fact, I was quite amazed when I received the call. A young male, technical and vocational training skills. Therefore, I hope my presence will provide inspiration to another young man or woman who wants to pursue their dreams in a branch of engineering, agriculture, or any other applied field within the faculty. Standing here today is an absolute honor. 
As I reminisce about the past two years spent at this remarkable learning institution, I am instantly hit with several mixed emotions. Firstly, I am elated to have completed this vital chapter in my educational journey. Secondly, do you remember the COVID-19 pandemic? I am a bit disappointed that the college was so heavily impacted by the outbreak, the online learning experience. Although many of us were content with the idea of staying within the boundaries of our own homes while attending classes virtually, we were also oblivious to the fact that the next time we would experience full face-to-face -face learning would be some 18 months later. Despite being online for more than half of the educational journey, I believe that this has better prepared us to be proficient in this technologically advanced world we live in. The hybrid approach to learning that we experience has accurately shaped us into individuals who are well prepared for life's unpredictability. The famous Wayne Gretzky once uttered the words, and I quote, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, end quote. Thinking of applying for that job or to university, send in that application. Do not stay pondering on the possibility of getting accepted, but rather think about how it will positively impact your society when you get accepted. Many of us did not shy away from taking our shots, whether it was pursuing a double major or triple major while participating in extracurriculars. Always remember the importance of taking action in order to achieve our goals, for we cannot hit a target we do not aim for and can't score if we don't take that shot. I took this shot, we all did, and the euphoria that I feel from this accomplishment is priceless. I say congratulations to all of you because this was a shot you took and certainly did not miss. The persistence you have displayed throughout your tenure at the Dominica State College is admirable and I'm confident that this accomplishment merely scratches the surface of what you will achieve in the future. I urge you to never settle for anything short of your best. Do not allow the trivial opinions of others to contaminate your own impressions of yourself. Be the offer in your book that is your own life. As we leave this ceremony this afternoon, many of us may feel ready to pursue higher education. Some of us may be eager to enter into the working field and others may be unsure of what the next step is. But I want you to do some self-reflecting. Take a moment to fill in something that you strived for and focused on for your tenure at the SC. Something that you thought was the end all, be all. Perhaps it was sports, fine arts, a debate, academics, an unhealthy social life, social media, or video games. We are about to launch into life. Have no regrets. At this time, I wish to share with you one quote that has truly resonated with me over the years. English poet John Donne in the 17th century famously wrote, and I quote, no man is an island, no man lives alone, end quote. Truthfully, I've experienced how successful I can be by surrounding myself with people who love me and always have my best interests at heart. And so I say to you fellow graduates, as we each embark on our own individual journeys in life, let us be always meticulous when deciding on who we associate ourselves with. I challenge you to surround yourself with individuals who are just as ambitious as you, or even more than you, and I implore you to build up a community of achievers within your circle. On behalf of the graduating class, I would like to thank all of the people at DSC who make it excellent. To the government of Dominica who have made who have eased the financial constraint on enrolled students through the tuition waiver. Thank you. To the Board of Governors, the administration, the faculty who give you all each and every day, oftentimes doing far more than what is required of you. Thank you. To the staff and maintenance department, to each member of each family whose support, sacrifice, and dedication has not been overlooked. We thank you. A huge shout out to Mr. Gist. To my own parents, Fitzroy and Sarah Anthony, I say thank you for always being there for me, especially in times of uncertainty. Mom, oftentimes you have sacrificed your own personal comfort to ensure that your children could have a wide range of opportunities, many of which you yourself did not have. Thank you. Dad, I will forever cherish the spontaneous discussions you had with my sister and I 
emphasizing the fact that knowledge is power. Kelsey, my sister, but also my greatest critic and supporter, you have been the perfect example of what steadfast faith, along with hard work and discipline, can really achieve. Although you are not present in person to hear this, I feel comforted and inspired by the fact that you are listening from one of the world's top universities, the Columbia University in the city of New York. To my other sister, Chanel, you have always been the perfect example of a big sister who wants the best for little brother. And to all the supportive members of my extended family, thank you for your countless words of encouragement along the way. I couldn't have done it without you. As my speech comes to an end, I wish to leave you, the graduates, with one last reminder. You have the potential to change the world. Every single one of you do. It is not because you may not believe yourself to be in the best position at this very moment that this should warrant giving up. We all have the power to positively impact society, whether big or small. Always remember that God is in control and nothing happens before it's time. Graduating class of 2023, we did it. Thank you. We are now at the true reason for the significant moments we are all gathered here for this afternoon. We now call upon Dr. Donald Peters, President of the Dominica State College and Deans of the Faculties of Applied Arts and Technology, Mr. Roll Leslie, Faculty of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Ashley Massicott, Faculty of Education, Mr. Stephen Joseph, Faculty of General Studies, Ms. Trudy Christian, representing Ms. Nadine Rivier, and Faculty of Health Sciences, Ms. Lilia Casey, to present the candidates for the various bachelor's, associates, and certificate programs. The Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences will now present the valedictorian, followed by the candidates for the Bachelor's of Science in Nursing. Mr. President, I have the honor to present to you the valedictorian who has completed outstandingly the requirements for his program of study, Mr. Malik Fitzroy Anthony.
Janika Bruno. And Dana Joseph. Sir President, I'm delighted to introduce to you those candidates who are graduating with honors from the various programs of study. Alia Alexander. Candy Esprit. Nadel Henderson. Abigail Daniel. Anita Drago. Shem Thomas. Bernice Lawrence. Priscilla Paul. Donna Lee Clifton. Leroy Noel. Raquel Farrell. Anil Bacchus. Luam Stevenson. Johnny Corbett. Kadina Lawrence. Rianja. Anna Augustin. Chelsea Moransi. Amani Chalaman. Vita Charles Woo! 
is uh, Etienne. Sahai Santami. Ebony Alexander. Hidden Farida. Diana Jupi. Sampaya Alexander. Naida Williams. Jocelyn Romain. Irela Sanjan. Sarah Telemark. Akisha Ogis. Davy Louis. Yami Alexander. Mark Neil Joseph. Janik Hippolyte. Jeremiah <laughs> Sophia Richards <laughs> Nella Burgos Alia Joseph Rivaldo Pante Child James Chelsea Luge Dinia Moro Alana Fritz Michael Aline Sophia Valmon Che Keaton's Do 
Roland Desjardins. Raël John Lewis. Kayla Warrington. Johanna Lewis. Charis Timothy. Desna George. Janssen Hiller. And Kiva Keva Pierre. Mr. President, I am also honored to introduce you those candidates for the associate degrees who have completed the requirements under the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology. Ethan Charles. Mikansen John, John. Jean Claude John Baptiste. There's no clock. Tony Benjamin. Jamel Daniel. Shania Matthew. Jaron Mayers. Dion Isles. Andre Riviere. Emerson Isaac. Terence Toussaint. Purity Andrew. Taisha Ailey. Shaquan Fountain. Tyrell Francis.
Tyler Farrell. Jaden Stevenson. Samuel Valerie. Conway Matthew. Alston Birmingham. Ian Thomas. Obadiah Loda. Jonathan James. Jason Joseph. Calbert Joseph. Evans Castor. Raheem Robin. Therese Philogen. Ryan Laville, Dinel Bertrand, Shahid Luis. Amika Pierre, Jevon Frank, Joyan Williams. Sunny Ito and Gabriel John Bapp. Mr. President, I have the honor to introduce to you those candidates for the associate degree who have completed the requirements for this degree from the Faculty of Arts and Sciences. Delaney Masicot. Colonel Gregoire.
Abdul Thomas. Nathan Telemark. Abisha Eli. Joachim Roberts. Abigail Morancy. Erica Preto. Janice Roll. Chanel Jajak, Delicia Dura, Tia Augustine. Nika Banis, Fiona Talbert, Anaya Prince. Kyle Farrell, Khalil Stout, Malika Sharpless. Selena Dangleben, <laughs> Alia Henry, <laughs> Ersani Felty. Jade Benjamin, <laughs> Taya Seals, <laughs> Jaden Alexander. Michael Peters, Beyonce Green, Cameron Taverney, Tanya Eustache, Kevin Boyd, Bridget Joseph. Kristen Peters, Woo! 
Alonzo Doctro. Naomi Didier. Zimaya Toulon. Kenrick Thomas. Serena George. Janaya George. Anel Mark. Kaylan Languedoc. Janiqua Kazimi. Jaden Challenger. Kenneth Clifton. Jaden Lee. Darren Francis. Nikima Alfred. Shaquanda Bellot. Venetia Gist. Aliyah Sorendo. Princess Caret. Gilma Joseph. <laughs> Judali Xavier. <laughs> Brianna Carty. Yoshi Mills. Daniela Laura. Chilean Valerie. Jaira Bruni. Kila Matthew. Sidoni Bellot.
Cornel Ferrara. Chevelle Zavi. Casmel John. Castle John. Pindi McIntyre. Move on, McIntyre. Natasha Hector. Naima Arias. Joel Brown. Anisha Ostry. Chanel Bethelme. Check Will Guy. Latisha George. Crystal James, Melody Lake, Jakim Francis. Kenzo Roye. Kayla Paul. Dilsia Augustine. Sharanda Robinson. Colin Guy. Shailon Vidal. Adin Bellot. Gibran Esprit. Gibran Esprit.
Javen Alexander. Andel Francis. Adina Larock. Anelia Kazemi. Janelle Matthew. Devin Vidal. Naya Townsend. Jamanda Ismail. Jamal Davis. Frances Cook. Anika Abraham. Gibson George. Kima Tavernier. Fredericks Williams. Mikel Lando. Kadisha Bato. Omari Hilaire. Tamisha Roberts. Dean Hunter, Nikael John Baptist, Keandra Libre. Tyra Francis. Eric Fountain. Courtney LeBlanc. Metin Brumant. Ranisa Riley. Dean Parkett.
Shanti, Julia. Monique Schillingford. Mia Caleb Marshall. Berlin Cherry. Sandra Fabiana Joseph. Nastia Martin. Fiona Nixon. Cassian Yusef. <laughs> Ethlyn Erica Robinson Garcia. <laughs> Latifa Joseph. Del Sol, Adea James. Erdel Daru. Mr. President, I have the honor to introduce to you those candidates for the associate degree who have completed the requirements for the program in the Faculty of Education. Colleen Duran. Vincia John Rose. Shari Francis. Selena Corriet. Nia James. Jessica Maroni. Shana G. Rodell. Esmarie Gossi. Melissa Bonnie Vigilant. Nikesh Shanika John Baptist
Wendy Laville George. Charlene Valerie. Marcia Bla Liquent. Marcia Grell. Chanel Élysée. Chanel Remy. Ilmond Kazimi. Vanilla Luke. Vanaya Newton. Nora Henry. Shania Thomas. So, President, these students have sucked successfully completed the requirements for the certificate uh, under the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology. Rani Hari. <laughs> Darren Peter. And Jonathan Hunter. Mr. President, I have the honor to introduce to you those candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for their certificate program in pre-health. Alisa Roma Stevens, Siwan Andre. <laughs> K. 
Kimani Kasi Xavier. Fennel Kishma Thomas. Monel Martin. Marsha Stephen. Chardell Prescott. Janelle Joseph. Raven George. Rhea George. Kimala Cuffey. Shante Kazemi. Ariel Christmas. And Alicia Bruno. Mr. President, I have the honor to introduce to you those candidates who have successfully completed the requirements for their certificate program in nursing. Shakira Pierre. Jemaya Harper. Charlotte Leslie Josie. Mary Toussaint. Nadinja <laughs> Esther Josie <laughs> and Karima Peters. Graduates, upon the recommendation of the faculties of the Dominica State College and by the authority of the Board of Governors of the Dominica State College, I confer upon each of you the respective bachelor's and associate degrees and certificates with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto of pertaining. Now, 
Congratulations. You may switch your part. Thank you. All right, let's give it up for the graduating class again. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. There you go. Yeah. Mr. Um, Edwards mentioned no littering of the country, so I had to pick it up. <laughs> All right, so. Now that we've done, or officially conclude the formal aspect of this afternoon's proceedings, we now present to you the top performers of the various faculties and recipients of special awards. So I want to call forward uh, our doctor, Romancia Eugene, our Dean of Academic Affairs, and Ms. Ashma McDougall, our Director of Student Activities, to present these awards. Okay, so first award goes to Malik Fitzroy Anthony, and that's from Flo Dominica. Ms. Sharon Jemot is also one of the uh, representatives for that. So Malik. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so. The award is sponsored by Flo, and it's for being the valedictorian. At Dominica State College, the valedictorian, as we know, is the student who has demonstrated consistent academic excellence, participated in extracurricular and co-curricular activities on campus, and demonstrated community sport and service leadership. That is our very own Malik Fitzroy Anthony. Congrats, Malik. Moving on. For the Male Sports Personality of the Year, and this award is presented by, you know, the, the Olympic Committee, that goes to Omari Hillier. Right. Now, for the Faculty of Arts and Sciences, sponsored by Jolly's Pharmacy, we have Caden A. Parillo. Can we have the representative for Jolly's? Okay, now we have for Faculty of Education, sponsored by Aid Bank, 
Rochelle Sherry's Larock. I think she's not there, so we can move on nicely. Uh, Faculty of General Studies, we have sponsored by Jays Limited, Nia Antoine. Nia is also unfortunately not there, so we can move on to another department, which is Faculty of Health and Sciences, that is sponsored by DSC, and that is Leona Dahlia Jeremiah. And now, back to our valedictorian for Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology, sponsored by Domlek this time, we have Malik again, Malik Fitzroy Anthony. Now back to sports. For female sports personality of the year, also sponsored by DOC, we have Sandra Fabiana Joseph. Now this year, 2023, the ambassador of the People's Republic of China in Dominica will present the Ambassador's Scholarship Award that goes to the top two students from each faculty and they will receive not one but $2,000 cash. Yeah, that's nice. His Excellency, Lin Xiong Zhang, and the Minister of Education, Honorable Octavia Alfred, will present these awards. So, our top students. In the Faculty of Arts and Science, we have Caden A. Parillo. Also, in the Faculty of Arts and Science, we have Claire and Leona Telemark.
in the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology. Once again, we call up Mr. Malik Fitzroy Anthony. Also in the Faculty of Applied Arts and Technology, we have Rivaldo T.M. Panfe. In the Faculty of Health and Sciences, we have Krista Chelsea Coppel, who is unfortunately not with us, but we have Leona Dahlia Jeremiah. Also, in the Faculty of Education, we have Rochelle Sheris Larock, who is unfortunately not with us, and we have who's with us, Melissa Bonnie Vigilant. And lastly, in the Faculty of General Studies, we have Janelle Amber Joseph. And also, in the Faculty of General Science, or General Studies, sorry, we have Elijah Tiana Bruno. So we'd like to thank the Honorable Minister and our Ambassador for presenting those awards. <laughs> Moving on nicely, um, an award for Student Affairs. We have a special award for Leadership and the Community Spirit, presented by our very own Dr. Eugene. That goes to Anel Debon. And in Tourism and Hospitality, a special award for volunteerism and assistance to the division that goes to Nikhil John Baptist. So the next award, Student Affairs Service Learning Award. This student has made a significant impact in their service learning activities at the college, in their communities, and with NGOs and other volunteer organizations, along with exceeding their service learning hours and being an exemplary service learner. So we have two awardees. And the very first one would be, or it goes to, Alia Alexander. And our second award goes to Ebony Alexander.
Ebony Alexander. Now, news just came in, and we have another award to present. So this award is for the Student Club of the Year Award. And this is sponsored by Lindomat Supermarket. So this award is given to the student or the student organization that has demonstrated remarkable spirit and has made a positive difference to the DSC campus and local community during the 2022-2023 academic school year. Organization members shall demonstrate diversity in programming and membership as well as the ability to work as a team and show leadership. So, that award goes to none other than the Environmental Club. So can we have anybody representing that club to come? I believe all our graduates and awardees do deserve an additional round of applause. As we near the end of this afternoon's program, welcome with me Ms. Abigail Morancy as she gives the vote of thanks. Pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members, proud parents, honored guests, and most importantly, the outstanding graduates of Dominica State College. <coughs> Sorry. Today marks a momentous occasion in our lives as we gather here to celebrate the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and determination. On behalf of the entire graduate team, sector, I would like to express our gratitude. First and foremost, we extend our heartfelt gratitude towards the Heavenly Father for gracing us with life to experience such a moment. Our families and loved ones who have been our unwavering support throughout this journey. Your sacrifices, encouragement, and love have propelled us in many ways to reach this milestone. We recognize that our achievements are a reflection of your guidance and devotion. To the outstanding faculty members of this and the staff of Dominica State College, we are profoundly grateful for the dedication and commitment to our education. You have not only imparted knowledge, but also inspired us to think critically, dream ambitiously, and believe in our potential, seeking higher heights. We raise a glass of gratitude to our fellow graduates. You have been our partners in this adventure, pushing us to excel and providing a support system as we go on. You have been there to push us as we continue to go on to the next chapter of our lives. Together, we have grown, laughed, and learned forging friendships that will last a lifetime. We would like to take this moment to express our gratitude to the individuals and organizations and the sponsors of the Dominica State College, such as 767 Dev, Cochrane United Farmers Group, Dominica Olympic Committee, and Nagico Insurance, amongst others. 
to the administration and everyone behind the scenes. Your hard work and meticulous planning have made this graduation ceremony a success thus far. Your dedication to ensuring our success and the smooth running of our college life has not gone unnoticed. As we step into a new chapter with thrilling excitement, we are filled with hopes and anticipation for the future. Thus, ending this chapter with a glorious hallmark, having been equipped with the skills, knowledge, and values assigned to reach and to make an impact on society, let us remember with great education comes great responsibility. For indeed, it is a privilege for us to be gathered here. As we embark on this new chapter of our lives, let us use our knowledge not only for, to achieve our own personal gains, but to also make an impact on our community and the world at large. Let us cherish this moment and all the moments that have led us this far. The future is bright and it is ours to shape. Once again, thank you to everyone who has played a part in our journey. As we encounter you, as we hope to encounter you in future chapters, congratulations to the graduates of 2023. We are ready to establish our hallmarks in this world. Be blessed. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Morancy. So, we have said thanks in words. And now, we want to express our thanks with a small token to some persons on this stage who have enhanced this afternoon's commencement exercise by their presence. Ms. Sehai St. Amy, 2022-2023 uh, student ambassador, will assist us in this matter. So, to present this wonderful fruit basket. We're going to present it to Mr. Burton, the spouse of the president. Second token of appreciation goes to the Minister of Education, Tourism, excuse me, Dennis Charles, the Honorable Dennis Charles. And finally, uh, for our commencement speaker, Mr. Davidson Edwards. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and well-wishers, we have come to the end of the Dominica. Just a little deviation here. We apologetically missed someone, so we are presenting a bouquet to the Minister of Education, showing appreciate Honorable Octavia Alfred. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of the Dominica State College 21st Commencement Ceremony. Please let us allow Her Excellency Mrs. Silvani Burton and Mr. Burton to leave first, and they will be followed by the academic procession. Once again, we congratulate you, our graduates, and we wish you nothing but success in the next chapter of your lives. Thank you all for coming and have a wonderful evening. Oh, please stand as the academic procession and our president leaves. Thank you.
just want me to tell them. And when you see the little guy in me head, yeah, you live me life like it's no problem. And anybody who fight with me, tell them me only a love for them. That's why I will never.
good, right up.